Hi friends, it's me here, Jasmine at Linen Bouquet. I hope you're all doing great. So today I have a topic to chat about and it is on quilt bees. So I wanna talk about what a quilt bee is, uh, the benefits of joining quilt bee and maybe some of the downfalls what to be careful of whenever joining a quilt bee and how to navigate that. So I have had the privilege of being a part of two different quilt bees now and they've run on for about three years. So the first uh, quilt bee that I was a part of, I was a part of that for almost two years. And then the second one is still ongoing and I'm kind of at the tail end of it. Um, I have had a really great experience with quilt bees. I have really enjoyed the quilting community, mostly on Instagram. Uh, since that's where I started out and really great great groups of ladies um, everyone's sharing their talents and um, you get a huge variety of different styles of quilting so that's been really great and I just want to chat about it um, and tell you kind of what my experience has been so a quilt bee is a group of quilters and they it's usually about 12 people um, and the quilt bee will last for 12 months so every single month one person from the quilt bee will be the quilt bee queen so the the queen bee of the group and that person gets to choose a block or a style of quilt that they like and then the rest of the group makes a certain amount of blocks for that person sends them all to that queen bee of the month and at the end of the whole year, every person should have had a month of their own where they receive blocks. And so at the end of it, everyone should have their own quilt. And it's really cool. It's a great way to spread out the work, um, to get crafty and help out a friend, and also to get some fun things back, especially if you're into scrappy quilts or you want some quilts that have a bunch of different fabrics maybe without having to buy it all yourself, um, getting through a lot of work, but only having to do a small amount yourself. So one of the reasons that someone might join a quilt bee is to spread out their workload, um, to network, to meet some really good quilting friends. If you're not in a community where you live, where there's a lot of quilters or you don't know anybody, um, personally, it's a really great way to network, to, to meet women online and then send things through the mail. So that's really nice. Um, expanding your own sewing skills, that's a really great reason to join a quilt bee. Uh, not everyone is at the same level. Everyone's always learning, but we start out at different points. And so I know that for me, it really expanded my skills to be in a a part of a quilt bee because I got to sew what other people were picking not just things that were my style also um, it gets you thinking outside of the same color schemes that you're always a part of so I know that whenever I go shopping I'm usually picking fabrics that are pink and cutesy with little um, hand-drawn types of designs um, I like pinks and light blues and navy blue and white and that's mostly what I buy uh, but whenever you're a part of a quilt bee there are uh, requests by the other quilters to pick what they like and to sew what they want so that's also very challenging in a good way because you're expanding your own skills uh, so those are some of the reasons that I would be a part of a quilt bee I really enjoyed my time in these quilt bees, uh, but there are some struggles. You know, anytime you have a group of people together, there's gonna be different interests. There's gonna be different ways of speaking and cultures, and there's gonna be some conflicts that come up. Uh, so I would say if you're gonna create a quilt bee, it's very easy. You uh, put together a spreadsheet of everyone that's gonna be a part of it, assign everyone a month, um, hand out everyone's addresses to all the quilt bee members and um, it's it's all done on the back end. it doesn't have to be public for everyone to see uh, so it's very very simple the hardest part is getting the people to sign up some um, some people are just really busy and, it, and it's hard to send mail I know that I have been late many times sending out my blocks so getting someone to commit is a little bit difficult whenever you're setting up a quilt bee and you also want to be really careful that you're picking someone that has similar style that everyone in the group is going to appreciate. If there's someone that only likes to do hand applique, they may not want to be a part of a quilt bee that does 
mostly um, FPP patterns. Or if someone likes to work with only pastels and you like grunge fabrics, you know, you, you should pick someone uh, to be a part of your group that has similar taste and style that everyone will be happy every month whenever they get their block. Um, that way nobody's feeling bad or left out or like their their blocks are not being as appreciated as others. So those are some things that you have to consider whenever you're going to prepare for a quilt bee. Also, you want to pick people that not that are not exactly um, see eye to eye with you on everything, but that have similar interests as you. Because the quilt community is very vast. It ranges over continents, uh, people with different mindsets, uh, views, beliefs. So that is a snag that I actually ran into. Um, with my first quilt bee, I was able to complete my first whole year in it. And then my second year, um, <laughs> I don't know how else to say this, but I got kicked out of the group. And uh, the reason being where tensions were high with all the um, sickness restrictions happening around the world, um, different views on how to handle your health became a really hot button issue uh, to the point where um, if someone was expressing things that they themselves believed and other people didn't, uh, that caused tension. And so, um, while I personally wasn't sharing on the group thread that was created, um, I did go to defend a friend that did share her, her belief. And whenever I did that, I was called out and, uh, because I didn't, I, I'm not the type of person that is going to bend to another person's beliefs. I stand very strongly on what I believe and uh, while I don't go out, you know, telling people what to do with their lives and their health, um, because I defended a friend that had shared something previously, I was kicked out of the group. Um, and so you gotta be really careful who you're picking to be a part of your group. I am not mad at the women that uh, chose to kick me out of that, that quilt bee. I am fine not being in the quilt bee. It did stink that I had committed myself for so long and I was uh, sewing and giving my best, but um, whenever it came time for me to receive blocks, I was cut out of the group and I didn't receive all the blocks that I should have. So, you know, that, that was kind of a give, give, give situation and then I got cut out. So you wanna pick people that are gonna have um, maybe similar sentiments as you and um, I would I would not go around cherry picking people that have the same beliefs. But if, if you know that there's a group of women that have similar tastes, similar ways of speaking, culture, like you can create a group like that, that's totally fine. Um, and now the group that I'm a part of, um, I think the women do have a similar mindset as far as respecting each other's viewpoints. Um, and honestly, personal beliefs really don't come into the conversation much in a quilt bee. It's mostly about fabric and making quilt blocks. I think tensions were just high in that situation. Um, but I wanted to show you what I have made with my quilt bee uh, blocks that I've received. So the first year I picked an FPP pattern because I wanted to make sure that everyone in the quilt bee was going to have a uniform style of my block. Um, I made it, I, or I picked a very simple pattern so that there wasn't a lot of complications so people with different skill levels wouldn't be overwhelmed and a simple color palette. So I think whenever you are choosing, whenever it is your turn to be the queen bee and you're choosing the block for other people to make, uh, depending on the group's skill set, you may want to be careful with what you're picking. Um, you don't want to overcomplicate something or make a very, very specific color request that other people may not have, unless that's cool with your group. Some groups want to go out and buy fabric every month. Some are a little tighter with their wallet. Some cannot spare that expense. Uh, it's all understandable. So I, I was very lax on mine. I said I wanted something that was pastel colored because that's what I always go for. I wanted uh, low volume white fabrics on the background prints. 
and I wanted them to all look very different, but I said, hey, if you have the materials, great, use them. If you don't, use what you have and I will make do. So that is what I did and I'm gonna show you my project. So this is from the first quilt beam that was over two years ago that I had, I had been a part of and I picked this really pretty and simple FPP block. You can see that uh, in the center there's a lot of pastel -y colors and um, on the outside it's these low volume whites and it was a very, very simple block to sew. It came together very quickly and I love the total look of it. Um, I was able to pick up the light lavender and purpley colors from the blocks and I went ahead and added some sashing. So you can see right there, I think it came out really pretty. Um, I, I believe I received all the well, maybe not all. I, I think there was um, a woman or two that were part of the quilt bee that didn't send in their blocks, but I just went ahead and sewed them up without those because, I mean, it's been over two years now. I'm probably not gonna get those blocks in. And um, this is a throw quilt, and I wanted the pastels because I, I really wanted this quilt to be used for my girls. And um, the reason I chose this specific block was because I wanted to see see a bunch of different low volume fabrics and I I have a lot of low volume fabrics myself uh, but other people have different fabric stashes they've been collecting and sewing with fabric much longer than I have so um, I wanted to kind of use that to my advantage uh, you, that's one of the best parts about a quilt bee is that you can share fabrics that other people have and you don't and they're generous with them so that's really sweet um, I love, love, love how this quilt top has come out and I really appreciated all the work that the women put into it. Um, so I put this together with this light lavender sashing and I think it's really pretty. Um, since it was a rainbow quilt bee, there's lots of colors in everyone's blocks that were a part of it. That was really fun and I really enjoyed being a part of that quilt bee. It, it didn't work out. Um, like I said, the second year, Whenever I was a part of it, I I got um, I had my month that I was assigned, and then right after I was kicked out of the quilt beat. So I know that there were some women that didn't even get around to sewing mine, and were probably like, "She's not even a part of the group. Why make her any more blocks?" But for my second year of being a part of that quilt beat, I chose another FPP pattern, and it was this uh, rainbow block and I loved it and I was really, really excited about getting these in. Uh, they're like little pinwheels, rainbow pinwheels, and I was really looking forward to receiving them and I didn't get very many. Um, only three women had sent them in to me and you know, I understand. I, I probably wouldn't sew for someone that was not a part of the group either, but the, for the women that did send these in, I wanna say thank you. You guys are very sweet and generous. Um, and I really appreciate it. So I'm gonna have to make a lot more blocks because like I said, only three of the women sent them in to me. So that's only six blocks. Uh, the quilt bee that I've been a part of and that I was a part of before, um, we decided to only send uh, two blocks per person every month. So look at how sweet those are. I wish I could have continued and, and received the rest of what I was expecting uh, because now I'm gonna have to make more myself and I'm gonna have to buy more colors and more fabrics just to complete it because I really wanted it to be a scrappy quilt with a bunch of different fabrics that um, that I honestly don't even have a fabric stash that's large enough to make with different colors on every single block um, or I'm sorry different fabrics on every block but it's really sweet um, if you get the chance to be a part of the quilt bee, it's a huge benefit. Uh, the quilt bee that I'm a part of now, I, I could have requested for the ladies to make more of these for me, but I just went with a whole new look. Um, I've really been wanting a flag, uh, American style um, flag quilt. So I asked for that with this third quilt bee round that I'm a part of. And I asked for the ladies to make this one. It's a heart flag with the little star there and with this one I I pretty much told the ladies um have as much fun as you want pick whatever fabrics you want for the 
blocks, but I wanted the blue specifically to be a cornflower blue. And this is kind of a darker toned cornflower blue. And that's another great thing about quilt bees. Um, some people are open to very specific suggestions like that. And some people are not. All the ladies in my current quilt bee, they were very sweet. They accommodated my request and they sent me these gorgeous quilt blocks. So I feel very fortunate. I now have, I think I have 24 of these flag heart uh, quilt blocks. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, add a link to all the quilt blocks that I'm showing you today in case you really like one and wanna use them yourself. I'm pretty sure that all the quilt blocks that I'm showing you are all free on different blogs or websites. So um, yeah, I now it's my turn to put all of these together for this this patchwork quilt bee that I'm a part of now. And I think it's gonna look beautiful. All these different fabrics that I don't have and I get to see in my own quilt top. And now I have my own patriotic quilt uh, that I will be putting together for this upcoming year for all the festivities, uh, 4th of July. I'm hoping to have it all done by then. And um, that's been one of my favorite things about quilt bees is that you get to put together an art piece that's all patchy from different people and um, see that come together and it's a great way to form a community. Uh, friendships, I have made some really great friendships through these quilt bees. Uh, one of my best friends now is part of the, my current quilt bee and it's just actually a couple of the ladies are really, really close to me now and I really enjoy their friendship. Um, we are a little more like-minded than my previous group and with that, we can chat about things outside of quilting, not necessarily on the group thread as always. Uh, we keep that to quilting topics, but um, I would say that the last couple of years, having these ladies as friends online, while that may seem um, not very personable, it has been an encouragement to me. So yes, those are the things that I would say about a quilt bee. They are definitely fun. Definitely do them. I recommend them. If you have not been invited to a quilt bee, make one. It's very easy as long as you find the 12 people. And you know what? It doesn't even have to be 12 months. It could be a six month quilt bee. Everyone at the end of it is still going to get um, enough for a quilt top. And you can increase if you're going to make smaller, a smaller time frame to quilt bee. It could be six months and everyone makes four blocks. That's still much easier than... Um, making an entire quilt top yourself. So I I love these and, and I'm gonna, I went ahead and put together some pictures of the last um, almost three years now of being part of these quilt bees because I've made those blocks and sent them off to the recipients to the quilt bee queens. And um, so I have a lot of pictures of what I've made and I'm gonna go ahead and make a slideshow for you to watch and enjoy. And if you have any questions about quilt bees, I know this was really casual and kind of all over the place. The conversation was just really chill. But if you have any questions about quilt bees, if you have any questions about my experience with quilt bees, let me know. I'm happy to answer anything you have to say or um, ask. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Have you had any um, particularly funny or troubling stories about quilt bees? I've heard that there's been a lot of drama in other quilt bees. So like I said, be careful who you're inviting and um, make sure that they're women that you kind of watched already. Even though it is really hard to know personalities through just Instagram pictures. Um, people don't usually put their entire personality and their, their pros and cons and their good and bad on the internet, but um, it's good to watch people and talk to them before you introduce them to a group. So definitely, if you gotta vet some people, make sure to do it before you start the commitment because you don't want to be stuck with that person for a whole year of a quilt bee and um, at the end of it, you know, just kind of regret that decision. So um, that's all I have to say about quilt bees. I'm gonna show that slideshow and let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, make sure to like this video and share, subscribe, follow, and um, I hope you enjoy.